good score, I'll give some award, okay? So just stay with this program until uh, July 31st, okay? Thank you, Shirak. Okay. Great, thanks, Dr. Lee. Yeah, so uh, the uh, IntelliChoice uh, program is super uh, generous, you know, all based on donations and uh, yeah, uh, it's really a, a great thing that Dr. Lee has started. So I'm happy to be a part of it and I'm glad you all are our students. So, so thank you, Dr. Lee. Yeah, you're welcome to stick around for however long or. Uh, okay, thank you. Sure, okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, so, okay, so, so Long has said that this week's homework is pretty simple and easy. Um, yeah, it's homework three and it's due this Friday and it is online. Um, so, uh, okay, just one more time, I'm gonna send the, the homework link and. Yeah, so it all, so the homework, I, I've been posting it every Friday, like when, thanks, thanks, yeah. So I, Adi sent the actual PDF. This is the link for just finding all the homework. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn off my camera to conserve bandwidth. Okay, so so yeah, so it's so this week um, is about quadratics, and this I don't know. This might be really easy to some people. It might be hard to other people, um, but it's a vast topic. And um, once it's sort of like once you once you can do it, uh, you're good, and uh, you're kind of set. There's no sort of uh, in between of you're okay at it. Uh, it's either like you can do it or you can't do it. So. Um, the implications of quadratics are vast um, and sort of everywhere in science and nature. So uh, it's a great thing to get familiar with early. Okay, so does anyone first just have any questions? Oh, first of all, there is a birthday today. <laughs> uh, Brianna um, might have to leave early because today is her birthday. So happy birthday to Brianna. Um, does anyone have any questions? before we start, mathematical or organizational? Okay, okay, yeah, thanks everyone for wishing uh, Brianna a happy birthday. That's very kind. If there are other birthdays, please let me know. <laughs> okay, this is great. Okay, any, any questions? So, um, you all can see my screen, right? This is all working? Yes, okay, thanks. Okay, good. Okay, so just a few organizational things from my end, okay. Um, homework one and two grades have been, uh, so homework one grades have definitely been returned at this point. Um, homework two grades will probably be returned. Some of you might have gotten your grades yet, others might not have. Um, generally, the grades have been better than homework one, um, but still, you know, they're, I mean, I think the, the, all the homework will be sort of required. I would suggest everyone do corrections. Um, and so it's okay, like, if you made below a B minus or whatever. Um, but, but generally, people are doing pretty well. For the corrections, um, just, you know, redo the questions that you missed on a blank sheet of paper and scan that and submit that. Don't try to I think it's better to do that than to like write on your your past uh, assignment. Okay. Yeah, please use ink as well. Okay, put like uh, black ink. ink gets picked up better. Um, Pratik said that the homework doesn't do anything. Okay, I don't know what his deal is. Okay, because he has he's sort of running his own his own uh, course. So so his I don't know how the homework is and uh, yeah in his. Uh, universe okay <laughs> but here the homework is sort of very deterministic okay so so did you, okay so for him it's not worth a grade but for us it very much is okay so attendance is important and homework is important and homework is more important than attendance but um, okay yeah you're welcome Brianna I'm happy for you um, Brianna says thank you if people are missing okay um, homework yeah so homework three has been posted so we talked about it Okay, so let's make a compendium, sort of a summary, a brief list of the things we've talked about uh, so far. So 
there have been four topics. Can I, what, what was the very first thing we started this entire course with? Lines. Lines. And so, yeah, indeed, lines and linear equations and everything having to do with lines, right? And we uh, talked at length about how uh, lines, um, specifically linear equations, are of degree. Does anyone remember? What is the degree of a line? What is the degree? Oh, um, like an an eight. One hundred eighty degrees. It's the highest power, yeah. So in algebra, the degree is the highest power, the highest exponent. In geometry, which we're going to talk about later, degree is something entirely different. So that what's the highest degree or exponent of a linear equation? One. Very good. So yeah, so if you respond on the chat, I'll try to sort of, you know, be with you there. Um, <clears throat> See, if I minimize this, I see. Okay, great. So, so that, that, yeah, so one is the high, in other words, if you have this linear equation, mx plus b, the, you know, the, the exponent here is one, and that's exactly what that means. What's the exponent on this term? Uh, there isn't any. Well, technically, oh, one. There, technically there is, but it's not one. It's zero. Very good, Aditya. So Aditya is sort of, I think, catching on. But yeah, the, technically this term has an x to the zero, and x to the zero is just the number one. So b times one is b, right? And so, so we never write x to the zero, but it's, it's there, right? It's hidden, okay? So anyway, so yeah, first, the first thing we talked about, what's, what was sort of the second thing we talked about? Absolute value. Mm-hmm. And we had these three definitions of absolute value. Um, yeah, and then we also talked about inequality, so I think that makes a third topic. And um, what did we cover most recently? That is not really related to any of this, but like on dimensional analysis. Yes, and what is dimensional analysis? Like conversion factors. Yeah, converting between things, and we figured out it's more than just getting from degrees to whatever, you know, getting from degrees to radians or miles to kilometers or seconds to hours. It's, it's, um, it's a powerful tool to analyze the world because, you know, the, the, the physical world has, everything has a dimension in the sense of everything has uh, like a unit, right? So uh, length, time, uh, you know, mass. Um, these are sort of the, fundamental mm, things in the universe, right? That like um, the sort of, you know, there's space and time and then there's matter that, that fills it. And um, you can come out with various combinations of those quantities and get things like Newtons and joules and Teslas and uh, amperes and all sorts of, just a diversity of units. And so dimensional analysis is a way to understand the world around us on a physical sense. And we, and we you know, we talked about how uh, we, we, ver we verified some really cool things like that the inverse of the Hubble time, uh, sorry, the inverse of the Hubble constant, remember this little discussion from Thursday, is, is in the dimensions of meters per, uh, sorry, is in the dimensions of seconds. So it suggests that this is some sort of age and this is actually the age of the universe. And we talked about how the dimensions of this constant is actually, you know, it's the speed of light and the dimensions are in meters of second. And there, therefore, it makes sense that this is a speed. So we talked about these cool little um, ways of looking at the world. So this is a, a really powerful tool. Today, um, we're going to extend what we know about these things, specifically our first discussion of lines. And I'm going to present quadratics in, uh, as a development of y equals mx plus b. Okay? So, what is the solution to y equals mx plus b? And first of all, what is the solution?
Anyone? It's um, the answer to an equation. It's the answer to an equation. Okay, so I did you also said y minus b. Okay, so your your solution is not right. Uh, Aditya, that's not right. Uh, Nishan, that's not quite right. The solution is when you say the answer to an equation, this is an equation that describes a whole set of points, right? There are a bunch of x values and y values that fit this equation, and in fact, an infinite number. So when you say the answer, um, I think you would be referring to one specific point, and that point is uh, where the y value is zero. That is how mathematicians define the solution or the zero. Yeah, so, so is it Adia? Yeah, so all these, so lots of people are saying like why, are including why in their solution. Aditya finally has posted the, the right solution that is minus b over m. And we found this by setting y equal to zero in this equation. So we said that zero is mx plus b. And if you solve for x, you subtract by b on both sides, you divide by m, you get x is minus b over m. So this is the solution to a linear, to any linear equation of the form y equals mx plus b. So the solution, if you were to draw some arbitrary line, I don't know, some arbitrary line, um, this is the solution. It's the point at which the, the graph crosses the, which axis is this? X-axis. The x-axis, that's right. So the solution, so you'll find, we're going to start talking about zeros and um, roots. These are all synonymous. Solutions, zeros, roots. Uh, in, you'll find mathematicians talking about like root finders or zero finders. These are just numerical ways to find solutions. So when you hear these things, um, treat them synonymously. So this was really easy, right? I hope, right? That you literally yeah. set one thing equal to zero and then, and then you're done. And we, what, what is the degree of this equation? We, we talked about this. What is the degree of y is on x plus b? Someone just said one. Yes, one. Okay. I'm going to choose to write this as y equals ax plus b, just for convenience. Look, it's the same thing if you just make this substitution. It's, it's the exact same thing. ax plus b, I'm just using capital letters instead of m, a little m and, and b. Okay, so don't be scared by it. This is the same thing. Okay. What happens if we increase the degree by one of this equation? So here, here I have a one. What if I increase the degree? We have a quadratic. Yeah, that's exactly. So you see where we're going. So um, first we had constant functions, right? And these were the things like this, right? In other words, and, and this is just one, so this is just B. So there is no, x in this equation at all. And these things look like just flat lines, so to speak. They're lines, but technically they're not linear because the degree is zero, right? Then we had lines, truly, of this form, ax to the one plus bx to the zero. And these things um, had some, you know, angle to them. They had some, I've, I've drawn two here, you know, they have, they cross the x-intercept, they, they cross the x-axis at some point, right? Um, now I'm going to increase further. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did to get from here to here. And now notice, how many terms are there in a constant function? How many terms is this? That's also one. It's one. There's one term here. How many terms are there in, in this? You can just say it. Like, I don't know. I, Isaac, no, they're, they're not four. There are two, two because this this is a term and this is a term. Usually when we say terms, uh, we just mean like the additive, you know, things in an additive relationship. If you were thinking of factors, yeah, I guess there you could say that there are two factors here and two. But anyway, yeah, there are two terms here. So logically, how many terms should there be if I increase the, the degree by one again? Shout it out. Three. Three. Very good. Just not even thinking about what it looks like. Just following the pattern. One, two, three. We all know how to count, right? <laughs> we learned this. It's the first thing we learned, how to count, right? So um, 
Yes. Oof. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're okay. So even yeah, as long as you're muted, it's okay. Okay. Um, like if you just uh, say something quickly and then mute yourself, um, I can tolerate some background singing. Okay. So what will this look like following the pattern? It will look like this. Look, I'm increasing the the power by one. Plus, I'm increasing the power by one. See, the zero became a one, the one became a two, so on. But there should be a third term. And that one will be like that. This is a zero, x to the zero. And what is x to the zero? Shout it out. One. One. So this is really conventionally written as this. Do you see the pattern, sort of? You know, you have a and then x squared and then bx and c. So the, the, the power in each thing, in each term, is reducing by one for each term. Okay, so, oops, this uh, computer, it like, okay, so let's just talk about, so, so does everyone agree that this is a nice kind of, this is like the general equation of a degree two polynomial. Like, does, does this make sense? Does this process? Yeah. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Now let's sort of analyze this, this guy, this new thing that we've found. What is the y-intercept? of this equation. B? It's not B anymore. Because, okay, first of all, what is the y-intercept? It's, look, just if you- What well, y is when x is zero? What y is when x is zero. So, yeah, so it can be anywhere along this line, and, and this line is described by x equals zero. So to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero. And when you set x equal to zero on this equation, you get y is, you know, these are zeros, so anything times zero is zero. You got y is c. So this is the y-intercept, okay? What is the slope? Is there a slope to this? No, it's not linear. It's not linear, okay, that's very good. But in a sense, there is an analogous thing to slope. And for the seniors, this will be very useful, but it's a great thing to know anyway. So to answer this, so remember in our linear world, what was the slope? M. M. Now, would it, see how we have um, an x squared term here? So that could sort of muddles the situation. B is no longer the slope. This, this graph, if you graphed this, it doesn't even look like a line. It looks more like a U. A U or a, this is called a parabola. And we'll talk much more about the shape later. Um, but there is no such, a, you remember the slope we, we described as rise over run? Well, look here, the rise, it changes for the same run. See, I go, I go to the right one, and here the rise is very small. And then I go to the right, the same unit, this is a little bit more than one, but I go to the right by the same amount one, and it's like significantly more of a, of a rise. You see what I mean? So the slope is not constant for every, uh, yeah, the slope is not constant as you go on a, on a parabola or on a quadratic. So let's sort of look, let's take an example. Would you agree that y equals x squared is a special case of this equation? Yes. Yes. You would, right? Because yes. I, it, it's, a, it's a quadratic equation, right? It, it has the degree two, but I'm just letting b and c equal to zero. So, so let's use this as an example, okay? So y equals, to, to sort of talk about the slope. So let's, let's put in some numbers like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Okay? So you tell me what, what the y values are. Nine, four, one, zero, one, four, nine. Very good. Nice and fast, good. Okay, so let's sort of think about what the difference is between each of these y values. Because remember, when we were talking about slope, here, I'll, I'll make a little analogy. Different, different function, x and y. Say I had negative one, zero, one, two, or whatever. The y values here are exactly the same as the x values. And look, what's the difference? How do I get from negative one to zero? I added one, right? What's the difference here? It is a constant. Yeah, and I keep adding one. And what am I doing on this side? I'm also adding one, right? And so what's the rise yeah. over the run? It's plus one over plus one, right? 
And that, that's exactly the meaning of rise over run, right? This is my this is my rise and this is my run. So the slope m is one. Now let's do the same thing here. What is the let's talk about the x values first. How do I get from negative three to negative two? What add I, one. I add one. How do I get from negative two to negative one? Add one. I add one. And so on and so forth, right? How do I get from nine to four? Track three. Five. Okay, who said that? <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, how do you get from four to four to one? Subject one. Okay, okay. What's what's wrong with you people? Four to one is three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking about one to zero. Okay, one. Uh, to I said three for, for the zero. first time. Good, good. You've you've reestablished my faith in humanity. Okay. So, so look, I've just taken the differences, right? How do I get from four to nine plus five? You see how I did this, right? I'm literally just a first grader could do this, right? Nine minus five is four, four minus three is one, you see, so on and so forth. Now, are these numbers constant? For example, here we had the same number. No. Right? Are these the same number? Oh. No, five, negative five is not the same as negative three, which is not the same as negative one, which is not the same as one, which is not the same as three, which is not the same as five. But let's take another, let's take the difference of this difference. What, how do I get from negative three to negative, sorry, how do I get from negative five to negative three? What do I? Add two. Add two. How do I get from negative three to negative one? Add two. How do I get from negative one to? Add two. Yeah, yeah. Add two, yeah, so on and so forth. So what, what happened? became constant. So. Yeah, so upon taking a second difference, in other words, in taking a difference of the difference, I got something that is linear. Okay? Now, I'm saying the word difference for the senior. So if you're a, if you are a ninth through 11th grader, rising ninth through 11th grader, just don't listen to what I'm about to say. This is not useful for you yet. But this this entire thing is very profound, okay, as you go into calculus, because you will find that a difference taken over uh, very small intervals, here these intervals are big, you know, one, but it, taken over very small intervals, that's just a derivative, okay? And it's actually called, a okay, it's, it's called a differential, and we'll, we'll talk more about this uh, at a later time with just the seniors, but, but you'll find that, um, Taking the derivative twice of a quadratic gives you a constant. Okay, so so um, so so for the seniors, this you'll 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 see sort of a more general picture of this. Okay, um, but this is sort of the essence of what Newton what Newton saw when he when he invented calculus. He said, "Oh, look, there is." This, this, this line-like behavior upon taking two of these differences. Okay, so just, just a heads up, this is very important in calculus when you talk about differential calculus. It's a whole field of... Okay, so this is sort of the essence of... The so is there, there is no slope, because see, the slope, so to speak, if you define it the same way, is constantly changing. So I think there's some sound in the background. So if you could just mute yours, whoever is making sound in the background, like there's some talking in the background. Okay. So just mute your sound. Okay. Um, so what is, okay. So we've sort of talked about Y intercept and the analog to slope. What is the X intercept of this equation? Okay, wh whoever is talking in the background, can you mute? I think I, hmm, okay. I can see who's not muted. <laughs> uh, okay, it's, it's either, I don't wanna mute everyone because then that's gonna discourage people. Oh, oh, I can mute everyone. Okay, it's okay. Uh, Sounds like it went away. But no, thanks everyone for being very thoughtful. Yeah. Okay, okay, what is the x-intercept of this equation? 
how did we find the x-intercept of a line? We set y equal to zero, right? Yeah, the same. And we're going to do the same thing here. Exactly. So I'm going, look, remember this was so easy, right? We set x equal to zero and we found immediately one line of algebra that this is the x-intercept of a, of a line. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do the same thing here. And you're going to show me what it is. See, I did the same thing. I set the y value equal to zero. Now, how do I solve for x? Factor, yeah. So, so look, is there a way to isolate x on this side of the equation? Okay, so I can, okay, I'm gonna do what people suggest. Okay, I'm gonna subtract c on both sides and this would give me this. Now what? How do I solve for x? Maybe factor out the x, I don't know. Okay, I'll try. I'm, look, I'm just doing what you're telling me. Now what? Uh, can, can you solve this equation for x? No. No. And so Long has already said in the chat, he knows where this is going. He's seen this before. Um, yeah. This, this thing, you can't, you can't really do anything with, with this equation because, you know, if, if c were 0 in this case, then, then you could do something, and then you would, be, you would have the answer. You could say, suppose c is 0. Then we would have zero is x. So, so then basically your equation would be just ax squared plus bx. But wouldn't and, you just use the quadratic formula? So that's what we're about to derive. Okay. So, yeah, so, so I'm saying if, if c were zero, which is not the general case of quadratics, but if c were zero, then your x-intercepts would be what? You all should know this. What are the x-intercepts now? Zero or negative a, negative a? b over a. Negative b over a, yeah. And so th this, these are the like, easy to read out solutions if c were zero. But so you see how the c screws things up? It muddles the situation. You can't just subtract c and then factor out the x. You can't, you can't do anything to this equation because the left-hand side is not zero. You can't apply the zero product property. You can't do this. So clearly, Finding the x-intercept of a quadratic requires some more manipulation to find. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to come out with a nice formula that is definitely something you should memorize. But the nature of what I'm about to show you is more like proof-based, okay? It's more like a derivation. It's not hard, but I uh, don't expect you to be able to do this on your own. This is sort of, um, I'm just showing you sort of where this comes from. Okay, so this is more like a math class, this little, the next five minutes, okay? So I'm going to write the, the general form of a quadratic, okay? And now I want to find the x-intercept, so I'm going to set this thing equal to zero, right? Now, I'm going to factor out the a for a reason you'll see. What happens if I factor out the a? What, what's left here? B over ax. Yep, what else? Plus C over A. Very good. Okay, now I'm going to do something called completing the square. And this is a very useful trick. And all you have to do is you divide this middle term by 2, and then you square it. So what's the middle term divided by 2? B over 2A. And then what happens if I square it? B squared, B squared over four. Four a squared, right? Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to add that to the left hand side, but that means I also I can't just add something to a algebraic statement. I also have to subtract it. Okay, so to, 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 to the zero, x. Sorry. Up to the x. There was like an x there. The x. Yeah. So I'm just talking about the term itself, like this coefficient. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is exactly what I'm going to add. So, so I can add, in, as long as I subtract the same thing that I add from an algebraic statement, I haven't committed like a crime algebraically, right? 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add b squared over 4a squared for a reason you'll see very soon. And then this, this, this stays the same. But then I'm also going to have to subtract it, right, to preserve the nature of this thing. Make sense? So this is, look, this is the same thing. Because b squared over 4a squared is z minus b squared over 4a squared is zero. And then you have the same thing. OK. Now I'm going to write this. I'm going to uh, sort of deal with these guys. I'm going to take them outside of this a. So in other words, um, let's, let's keep these guys with the a factored out. OK. And then these guys. I'm going, to, I'm going to multiply the a out, OK? And what, what do I have? I would have c minus b squared over 4a, right? Does everyone agree that this, yeah. this is the same thing as this? Yes. OK, now this, what is this? Juniors and seniors should immediately see this and know what this is. Uh, that's a perfect square. It's a perfect square. And so if you haven't seen this, um, you, you, you won't have the eye for a perfect square until you sort of do a lot of these, what we're going to do this week. Um, but yes, this is a perfect square. And how does it factor? Juniors and seniors, how does it, how does it go? X plus B over 2AX. Yeah, b over 2, you're right. Yep, b over 2a squared, right? If, if you wanted to verify that this is the same thing as this, you could just, you know, foil this out, so to speak. You could, you could do x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a. Sorry, b over, sorry, b over 2a, I'm running at the edge of the screen here. And if you, if you wanted, if you doubt this, you could foil this out and you get x squared, you'd get, you'd get exactly this, okay? But yeah, juniors and seniors, you should see this kind of thing. You should just read out what it is. OK, so th that's exactly what this is. Now I'm going to move this junk to the other side. What happens if I subtract by C and add by this? Will, will the other side read? Right? You agree? Yes. Yeah, so I just added this stuff to the other side, and I subtracted by C. And then I, I wrote this as the perfect square. Now I'm going to divide by this a and I'm going to solve for now I can solve for x right because this thing is inside so, so basically so, the rest is just easy right you just solve for x so x plus b over 2a squared is I'm going to divide over 4a squared uh, 4ac minus c over a and now I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of this square and that would give me plus and minus, this is what happens whenever you take the square root, you got plus and minus, b squared over 4ac minus ca, c over a, right? And now I'm gonna add, by, uh, sorry, I'm gonna subtract by um, this, b over, so, so then, and then see, look, I have x all by itself on the side of the equation, minus b over 2a plus and minus, b squared over 4ac minus c over a. And now I'm going to just simplify this a little bit. I'm going to put the 2a in the bottom. OK, I'll, I'll do it in two steps so it's not too confusing. Uh, I'll, I'll write minus b over 2a. In, in this frac, in this little bit, I'm going to write this as um, all over 4ac. I want this common denominator 4ac. Okay, because the, that's that's common, right? That I could write this minus this in terms of this common denominator, and I would have b squared minus 4ac squared, right? And now, what is this? Now, now I can just write.
Would it not just be four C squared? Would it not just be four C? You already have C in the, uh, sorry, not C. You already have A in the denominator of C over A. No, this, this is, uh, this came from writing C over A. So C over A is the same thing. My, minus C over the same thing as 4AC squared over 4AC. Oh, no, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, this is just 4C. Thanks. So do you agree now? Yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, good catch. <laughs> um, okay, good. And now I can just write this as... Anyone sort of anyone who knows the quadratic formula kind of uh, say it? Well, I, okay, I guess how, how would I manipulate this to become what we know kind of colloquially? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, so you take the 2a and like you could divide it, you could take 2a because there's a 4a in there and then you can like divide the entire thing by 2a. Okay, so so I'm trying to actually I'm looking to make sure I didn't screw anything up here because I could have. Um, that would be bad. Um, give me a sec here. Um, complete this. Oh, no, it's right. Here. I think I'm missing a factor of something. One sec, one sec. Give, give me a sec, people. Um, hmm. Okay, so something, something went somewhere here. E over two. I'm missing, I'm missing a factor of a somewhere. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, instead of wasting time now, uh, I'm gonna. I'm just going to redo that. I could have just screwed up like some algebra. I'm going to give you, uh, if you want to stick around at the end, I'll just do this at the end, but I, I want to get through sort of what you need to know for the SAT because that's what's actually important. The quadratic, this should reduce to minus, minus B over 2A. Uh, I'll write it like this. Minus B plus and minus screwed, uh, B squared minus 4AC over 2A. So, so okay. So, sorry, I... I probably made like a sign error or I forgot to factor something out here. Um, but this, this is the quadratic formula. I'll do this, I'll do this again uh, and try to get it right. Okay, it, it's, not, it's not hard, it's just I can screw up some math here. Okay, anyway, th this is what you need to know. So, mem so memorize this, okay? Um, and let's just verify that this is true for the following. Let's, let's verify. So what, what do we know the solutions are for y equals x squared? Okay, so, so first of all, what do people want? Do people want me to fix this first? Because I'm-, I'm uh, Just keep going. Okay, okay, okay. I, I figured that more people are worried about actually being able to do the problems than the derivation. So, so stick around if you're upset with me, because I'm upset with me. <laughs> okay, so what are the solutions here? What? In other words, what, what are the values of x to give you y equals zero? Zero. Yeah, zero. Look, if you just by inspection, you know that the solutions better be, uh, sorry, better be x equals zero. Because when you put in zero, you get zero. So let's write this in the form y equals ax squared plus bx uh, plus c. And how would that look? That would just be, you know, a is one, right? So, so x squared. A is one. I'll, I'll write it like this. 
where a is one, what is b in this equation? Zero. Zero, what is c? Also zero. Yeah, and so I'm gonna apply the quadratic formula and that says that the x-intercept is minus b, so minus b is zero, plus and minus the square root of, b, what is b squared? That is zero squared, which is zero, minus four ac, well, 4ac, you know, is 4 times 1 times 0, and 2a is 2 times 1. So the numerator is just 0, and so that's just 0. So indeed, the quadratic formula gave us the right answer. Yeah? So it, so it worked, basically. Let's, let's look at this. Can someone guess the solution to this quadratic, uh, to this quadratic equation? Negative 1. Very good. So by, if you know how to factor things already, by inspection, you would, well, you could factor it in your head. But if you just look at this and you say, let's put in negative one, then negative one squared plus two times negative one plus one gives you zero. So, you know, this is one minus two plus one. That's you know, two minus two, which is zero. So negative one we know is the solution. And now what is A here? One. One. What is B here? Two. What is C here? One. And I'm going to put it in the quadratic formula. Uh, X is minus B, so minus two, plus and minus square root B squared, four, minus four AC. Uh, four AC is four times one times one, which is four. Which is four. Over two A, well, that's just two. Two times one, two. And what does this give me? Negative two plus and minus, this is just zero. Square root of zero is zero, so this entire thing goes away. What is two, negative two divided by two? Yay. So it works, right? How about this? Can anyone guess the solution? X is three. Mm -hmm. So whoever's talking kind of knows his stuff. <laughs> so kudos. Why is it x, x equals 3? Because 0. Yeah, if you just looked at this and you said, what do I need to make y equal 0? It's pretty easy to see that you would want the, you know, the right-hand side to be 0 and that 0 squared is 0. So I basically just have to solve this equation. That equation is x is 3. So by inspection, which is a great way to solve quadratics, if you're just smart and you've seen this before, you know, by inspection, x equals 3. So now let's verify this using the quadratic formula. So is this, first of all, in this form? Oh, you have to... No, uh, you have to expand it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not... So I can't apply the quadratic formula to something that's in this form. I have to get it in this form. And how do I get it to that form? I have to expand. Uh, some of you would be able to immediately tell me what you know, a minus b squared generally is. But for people who are not there yet, let's just... Foil, right? This is the sort of first outer inner last thing that you all should have learned a while ago. So the first term is x squared. The outer term is minus 3x. The inner term is minus 3x. And the last term is plus 9. If you don't know how to foil, um, stick around afterwards and we'll talk about it. So if this is confusing, going from here to here, stick around. And what is uh, 3x minus 3? Oh, what is 3x minus 3x? Right. Everyone agree? Yep. Great. So now, now we can apply. See, now this is in this form. What is A? One. One. What is B? Negative six. What is C? Nine. And so now applying the quadratic formula. So, so now someone tell me what, what it would be. I'll, I'll write the quadratic formula generally, and then you... So it's x equals 6 plus or minus negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 over 2 times 1. Very good. Two, ti two times 1, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And so this is, this, this entire radical is 0, and so you're left with 6 over 2, which is 3. And that... Indeed matches our guess. 
So you can see that if you can just guess the solution, there's no point in doing the quadratic formula. And for much of the SAT, you will not use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is like last resort, okay? Um, so uh, let's see here. Okay, so, so yeah, quadratic formula is like last resort when you don't know how to factor something. Um, I want to just do a few more examples that are important. What are the solutions to this by inspection? It's pretty similar to this one. What are the solutions? Anyone? X is negative two. Very good. Because when you put in negative two, you just get zero. And that's what you, you know, by inspection, you can just see this and you can tell. Right, that zero squared is zero. Okay, now how do I get this into what, this form? You multiply it out. Yeah, and, and, and okay, so now for the people who are getting impatient with it, which I have a sense of. Plus squared plus four x plus four. Yep, and so if you don't know how to get from here to here, stick around, okay? The people who have more experience, like immediately see the square of a sum and they just tell me what it is because they've done this for years, okay? If you don't, if you don't have the speed yet, it's okay. Um, it's something you'll develop. And after you foil, you know, it'll take time. You, you'll you'll end up doing this like a million times, and you'll foil this out first, outer, inner, last, and you'll do that a million times, and then you'll just get sick of it, and then you'll just start saying this kind of thing. Okay, so what's a? Someone different now. Let's see. Um, uh, Isaac. Are you there? What's a? No. Uh, Jessica, what's A? Okay, so Isaac is, Isaac put like ellipses. Is it one? Yeah. Yeah, A is one. Good. Someone else tell me what is B? Four. Four. What is C? Four. Four. And so applying the quadratic formula, what would I have? Uh, x equals negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, 4 squared minus, sorry, 4 times 1 times 4 over 2 times 1. Yeah, so if you're very confused, don't be. all. There's no genius in applying the formula. You're literally just taking this, like, general formula, and... You're just putting in the values you determine. So if, if this is confusing, it, it shouldn't be, right? Because look, B, we put in money. So, okay. It's just literally like monkey see, monkey do, okay? And what is the solution to this? Uh, sorry, uh, what, what does this equal? Well, well uh, this is zero because, you know, this is 16 minus 16. And you're left with minus four over two, which is minus two. And indeed, that is what we had guessed, right? Can you open? Oh yeah. Okay. So 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 Brianna has her birthday today, and she has to leave early. She she, she emailed me about this. So give me just a sec, people. Um, yes. okay. Brianna, I've sent that to you. Okay. Uh, okay. So does this does this make sense? Yes. Okay. So we got. I'm just verifying the quadratic formula. Okay. How about this one? Can anyone guess the solution? You have to actually use it. Mm. Even if I use it, first of all, can you think of a number? Can anyone think of a number? In fact, let me say this. I will pay you on my word um, $100 if you find a real X that satisfies this. That's the solution to this. Ooh. Long is now listening. Right? Can anyone look? Think about it for a few seconds. I literally, I, I will pay you. I'll Venmo you. The stakes are way up. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, you you just can't. You you just can't. <laughs> so why like? I mean, can I use imaginaries? No, because I said real X. You see, you see the fine uh, print. You know, when, when people make bets, I said, uh, you know, can, I'll, I'll pay you $100 if you find a real X. And so if you, if you told me, we're going to talk a lot more about complex numbers and imaginary numbers, but if you told me that I 
is the solution. I, I would not pay you hundred dollars because this is not real. This is this is imaginary. Even though, even though you're right, okay. So anyway, so there. So first of all, we know intuitively there is no solution. Now, what happens if we put in the quadratic formula? Is this in this form? Uh, we have, no. It basically, is what is a? One. One. What is b? Zero. zero. See how there's no b to the x term here, so b is zero. What is c? One. Okay, let's put it into the quadratic formula. You can already see where this is going. Yeah, you can already see where this is going. Yeah. And what happens? Minus is it zero? Plus and then two. you subtract some. So you get a negative number. Yep. And that's the right. C over 2a. Two, 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, so again, for the people who are confused as to how I did this, I'm literally just putting this into the quadratic formula. Y is minus b plus or minus square root four, uh, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay. I'm just plugging in numbers. So don't be confused by this. And this is minus 0 doesn't mean anything. And what's the square root? Negative four. Can you take the square? First of all, can you think of what the what the square root of negative four would be? Is that a real number? No. No, because you can't multiply anything by itself to give you a negative number. You you know you might think two is the solution, but no, two times two is four. You might think negative two is the solution. I mean, is is the square root of negative four? But no, negative two times negative two is is again four. So. Um, so this thing doesn't, can't be evaluated, and therefore there is no solution. Now when we talk about complex numbers, we'll see that actually, if you include the, the, the imaginary plan, the imaginary sort of line of numbers, uh, this would be 2i, and your solution would be plus or minus i. But don't worry about this yet. Okay. For our purposes and for most of the purposes of the SAT, um, there is no solution to this equation. So the quadratic formula gives you the same result that we found intuitively, that there is no solution. Okay. Uh, Adi says, just like an imaginary number, we are we can imagine having 100. Yes, you can imagine having $100. Yes. So apparently, what, what was, what was um, the, the radical here? Was it positive, negative, or zero? Th this thing. Not the radical, but the, the thing inside. Negative. It was negative. So when, when this thing is negative, in other words, when b, b squared over, sorry, b squared minus 4ac, when that thing is negative, generally, no you don't have a solution. And Unless. yeah, I mean, in, in no, there's no real solution. I should yeah. Really say. But yeah, you know what this means. When, um, when this, okay, first of all, sorry. This, okay, I wrote this wrong because I did this a bit haphazardly. It's not the square root that's, the, it's the thing inside the square root, okay? And this thing is called the discriminant. Uh, I think that's how you spell it. It could be an E in here. Anyway, it's called the discriminant. Um, when, when the discriminant is zero, you have exactly one solution. And when it's greater than zero, you have two solutions. And for an exa we, we did examples where all these things were true. Like, let's see. Um, let's find one where there's one solution. Yeah, like all of these. Like for this one, the b squared minus 4ac here was 36 minus 36, which is zero. So there was one exactly one solution. Um, in fact, I think almost all of them were like of that nature. But yeah, if you if the discriminant is positive, then, um, then you would have two solutions. Make sense? So you need to know this, okay? Write this down if, if you, uh, this is new to you. So sort of long story short, quadratic formula is the last resort on the SAT. Don't, don't use it uh, if you can guess the solution, okay? And we're gonna, so tomorrow and Wednesday, we're going to spend a lot of time. It's gonna be a very valuable lesson because we're going to talk about cool little ways to sort of develop the intuition. And some of you already have this intuition, but um, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll develop these skills. And it turns out that there are, yes. Okay, so anyway, this is exactly what I just said. Okay, so I'm gonna send the attendance quiz and
I'm also then going to just redo the quadratic formula derivation so it's not, uh, so those of you who are itching to see it, uh, and I, I would be there, you know, I would be the same way. I'd be pretty upset with myself, honestly. I'm, I'm surprised, it, it's a very simple derivation. Okay, so I just sent out the link so get started. If you're curious, I'm going to redo the derivation right here. And once once you finish the quiz, you're free to go. Uh, unless you wanna, yeah, unless you wanna see sort of the, the fate of this. Okay, people, so I figured out sort of, I, I just made a little algebra mistake uh, in the derivation. And so if you wanna know sort of what happened, uh, I can talk you through it. Oops, what is, man, this, this app like has a delay in it. Um, okay, keep making typos here. Okay, so I figured out my error and does anyone want to see? Okay, so people are asking. Uh, so Adi, you said if on a problem there was no solution. Oh, okay. No, that's not. That makes sense. If there were, if it was like if one side of it got no solution and the other side of it actually got solutions, then algebra wouldn't make sense. Mm. It's possible. That, that's not happening. So. It's possible to have. Um, Real solutions and imaginary solutions simultaneously. Not not in quadratics, but in higher order polynomials, it is. <laughs> so, like the same, like that gets you the exact same answers. That gets you the. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, I can't explain it. <laughs> okay. Um, Any hard. For Mr. anyone. Chirag, uh, what's like when I'm answering my quiz, it all it's only showing like the first six options. Like it's not showing anything like after that. And when I like submit the quiz and then I'm checking my score, then it shows all the options. That is very strange. So I'm looking at the quiz right now. Just like for all of the questions? No, for like the questions where you put in like more than like 
um, six options. Uh -huh. It's like oh, there's it's like an arrow key. There's like a little like arrow that you like, press. I I had to do that originally. It was like scrolling, but like there was that arrow, so I hit that. Oh okay. Makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I unfortunately don't have much authority <laughs> over Google. Um, do, okay, does anyone want to see this derivation? I, I just, I made an algebra mistake my first time. So I just left out like a factor of A. So oh, what what was that mistake? Yeah, so, okay, so uh, let, do you want to go to the original? I'll, I'll go yeah. to the original thing. So it's, we have some closure. So we know that I'm not just making, you know, I always feel horrible if, I can't derive something like, you know, it just feels bad because it's like I'm telling you something that I haven't shown. Okay, so let's see what I what I screwed up. Um, so I completed the square, right? Adi? And then why is it blurry? Why is blurry? <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> I don't know who did that. Anyway, um, yeah, when I, when I completed the square, um, I added this b squared over 4a squared. And then, so this was all fine. And then I, I screwed up here. Because see, I, I, divide, I divided by a. Oh, and I, and I lost the square here. Uh, yeah, that's that's what got me. That's what did me in. <laughs> and um, and the C should not. Be, I don't know where the C came from. It should not be here. So I, I made yeah. Yeah, yeah. then that, that makes sense because then you can yeah. then you can actually just, like put two A on the bottom side. Yeah, then yeah. Four A C would be left on top. You could because it was the fact. Yeah, and then if you when you get your common denominator here, it would be uh, B squared over. 4a squared and then sorry no, yeah. c squared 4a squared minus uh, c a yeah and then it makes sense yeah yeah a here a c four four eight and then you're good and then you're done and you could factor out the so sorry yeah so sorry I wish I didn't make that mistake thank you so much yeah you're welcome okay see you all if you have any other questions stick around I'll be here for